COVID-19, every day we're learning more about the struggles of our healthcare workers, the trauma they're enduring shift after shift, the exhaustion, the anxiety, the grief and despair, the feelings of betrayal are only increasing. This isn't burnout. Burnout suggests deficiency, not being up to the task. We know that's not the case. This is moral injury. Moral injury is described as psychological trauma involving unprecedented life experiences, which can lead to haunting states of inner conflict and turmoil. In many ways, the trauma healthcare workers are experiencing is comparable to that of soldiers in combat over prolonged periods. Yet it's also different. Frontline healthcare providers are barely coping in the chaos of this medical earthquake. A tsunami of psycho-emotional damage will surely follow and continue to ramify over the months and years to come. The COVID-19 Rapid De-Stress Protocol, CRDP, has been created to help mitigate the damage. I'm Dr. David Groupman, and welcome to the COVID-19 Rapid De-Stress Protocol webinar. In this training, you will learn from a diverse group of physicians each of whom has practiced and taught medical acupuncture for the past two decades. By way of introduction, I am board certified in internal medicine and medical acupuncture. I practiced and taught emergency medicine for 25 years, and I'm a fellow of the American Academy of Medical Acupuncture. I've been training physicians in this specialty for the past 15 years. The CRDP is aimed at doctors, nurses, nurse practitioners, PAs, and paramedics. If you are certified in percutaneous procedures, you can successfully master this protocol with a little time and effort. Our goal is to teach you a new and effective approach to stress modification to be used by healthcare workers and for healthcare workers. Please don't dismiss this because it's new to you or not in keeping with your previous training. Keep an open mind. Here we go. This protocol combines two treatments which have been widely used over the past 10 to 15 years for stress mitigation. There are two clinical precedents that inform the concept. First, auricular needling has been used successfully on site for de-stress therapy after 9-11, after Hurricane Katrina and Superstorm Sandy and many other disasters. Secondly, the CRDP draws on the combat psychiatry experience of Captain Robert Kaufman, MD, during his time in Afghanistan. Dr. Kaufman developed a straightforward six-needle treatment for stress management, which he used on groups of soldiers at forward positions and in hospitals, often under combat conditions. The results were excellent, and these treatments became very popular among the soldiers. They would line up out the door when they knew he was going to be available. The CRDP, in short, combines auricular needling with what we call the calming and centering treatment. Now, conventional therapies for PTSD, and we might better call it post-traumatic stress injury, include cognitive behavioral therapy, talk therapy, antidepressants, and anti-anxiety medications. Results are generally mediocre and mostly not applicable to more acute or frontline settings. The CRDP aims to meet the need for a practical, non-pharmacologic stress-modifying therapy that can be widely and rapidly deployed. This treatment can be administered in less than five minutes. Treatments can be done in groups and in a variety of settings. The recipients need only remove shoes and socks, and there's no need to talk. Treatments last 20 to 30 minutes and often evoke a mild, pleasant, endorphin-mediated calming with concurrent decrease in sympathetic nervous system tone, that is to say, level of excitation. Patients will really feel better. Most people find they're less agitated, less anxious, and notably, sleep is much improved. This is important and very helpful in coping with stress. The training is organized into several modules. First, the neurophysiology and evidentiary basis for our current understanding of post-traumatic stress and the neuromodulating effects of the CRDP on the brain, peripheral and autonomic nervous systems will be reviewed. Needle shock precautions and needle etiquette will be addressed. The auricular trauma protocol, or ATP, will be discussed and demonstrated. Anatomy, point location, and needling for the calming and centering protocol will be discussed and demonstrated. Finally, we'll sum up, discuss appropriate set and setting, and address some of the more frequently asked questions. 
To put it all together, we'll demonstrate the treatment in, in its entirety. We have been teaching and using the auricular trauma protocol and the calming and centering protocol for both acute and chronic post-traumatic stress for over a decade. We know they really work. You are about to learn a new and effective technique, a tool to help your colleagues and yourselves through this difficult time. Thank you, and good luck. Hello, my name is Mitchell Elkis. I'm a neurologist from the state of Michigan, outside of Detroit. I'm a teacher of medical acupuncture, and in this time of great need, we're all trying to do our part. I'd like to talk about post-traumatic stress and the neurophysiology underlying it, particularly with how that leads to a successful treatment with six ear needles and or six head and body needles. Post-traumatic stress can be understood as a potential mental health disorder, simply triggered or complexly triggered by experiencing, witnessing, or even hearing about a terrifying event. It can affect our ability to live normally by affecting our role in society, our ability to work, or our ability to relate to others. It manifests in the form of flashbacks and nightmares, severe anxiety, hypervigilance, waiting for the other shoe to fall, uncontrollable thoughts about traumatic events, and ultimately an attempt at surviving emotional numbing. There are four major characteristics that are worthy of differentiating. One is in the category of intrusive memories. These are forms of traumatic thoughts that force themselves back into your mind when you're sleeping in the form of nightmares or in the form of flashbacks during your waking day. This has to do with a portion of the brain, as we'll discuss, that processes memory, the hippocampus. Then there are avoidance behaviors. The things that you do to try and keep a lid on the uncontrollable thoughts that are typically triggered by the sounds, the sights, the smells that are associated with the traumatic events in the first place. So you tend to go through those avoidance behaviors to keep yourself away from those triggers as much as possible. There are negative changes in thinking, negative changes in mood with anxiety, depression, and lack of clarity and thought at times. And there are changes in physical and emotional reactivity with irritability, insomnia, and emotional numbing. I've just described a system designed to help the organism survive existential threat. The system is designed to meet the stress of the challenge and then take some time to recover. I further went on to describe what happens when that system is not allowed to recover, when the stress is so great and overwhelming or so protracted over time that it results in an imbalanced state for the survival system. This unbalancing is what results in the injury that we know as post-traumatic stress. What follows are a series of six needle points for the ear and six needle points for the head and body that can be useful in the rapid de-stress protocol.